Welcome. Are we now seeing the slide in iron ore prices that has been predicted for some time? Well, Kirsten, hi, and thanks for having me on. Look, I mean, clearly we've come out of Chinese New Year. Um, we've come out of winter, and I think it was quite a savage winter up in China, so activity levels have been quite depressed. You know, we still think, though, we are looking at a lift in iron ore price should happen in the coming weeks. We do expect to see economic activity pick up seasonally. You know, steel production should lift as we go out of winter and into what is seasonally a strong period for Chinese construction. So, no, we don't think this is the start of the slide just yet. Um, we do think, though, you know, iron ore prices this year will be relatively range-bound but averaging, similar to last year. And so for how much longer do you expect there will be an increased demand for Australian iron ore? Look, I mean, we think Chinese steel production, which is now averaged above a billion tonnes for something like the last five years, we expect that to continue at least this year into next year as well. Um, so that should, from a demand perspective, support iron ore price. Uh, on the supply side, we start to think about beyond 25, 26, 27, when new supply comes on in West Africa. But we think iron ore prices, on average, will be well supported at least the next couple of years. Is that mine already influencing the volume of Australian exports? And can you tell us how much iron ore China is currently stockpiling? Chinese imports have been exceptionally strong. I mean, last year alone we saw a step up in imports of about 70 million tonnes. So they're importing well over a billion tonnes per annum now. Port stocks have risen. They generally do rise at this time of the year and peak around now and then slide down throughout the course of the year. But we're sitting on around 130-odd million tonnes of iron ore. I mean, that's not the peak. We have seen them as high as 160-plus million tonnes. So, you know, we are actually below the peak. And as I said, you know, we still think iron ore demand will be strong this year from China. And more importantly, we don't see any growth in low-cost supply from the iron ore producers, both here in Australia and Brazil, at least this year. And you do think that demand will be strong despite reports that China's steel mill margins are reported to be weak. Would that normally signal that a correction in the commodity price is imminent? Yeah, look, I mean, you're right. I mean, we have seen weak steel margins. I mean, as I mentioned, we've come off the back of winter, Chinese New Year as well. Um, our view is that when you look at what's happening at the moment, steel margins in China seem like they've picked up a little bit. And that's evidenced by the fact that the premiums for high grade are lifting a little and the discounts for low grade are increasing as well. So, you know, I think it's too early to call a big slide in iron ore. As I mentioned, you know, we are very positive that iron ore can average similar to last year and similar to what it did the year before that as well. Do you expect there'll be more clues to the commodities outlook from tomorrow's National People's Congress, which will get underway in Beijing? Yes, very much so. I mean, I think all eyes are watching to see whether the government does more to help, particularly the ailing property market in China. You know, we would po point out, though, that you know, the property market is less relevant to steel demand than it has been in recent years. Um, infrastructure, automotive, shipbuilding have all started to increase year on year, which is de-emphasising the, the role that property plays in the steel market. Having said that, it's still very important to steel demand in China. And so I'll just get you finally to make some forecasts in relation to where you see the price in both the near and long term for Australian iron ore. Near term, you know, we do think iron ore prices as steel production lifts in the coming weeks can probably push back up towards $130 a tonne. Our average for this year is 120 as it is roughly for next year as well. Um, but in the second half of this decade, we do see prices eventually drifting down below $100 a tonne. Glenn Lawcock, thank you. Thank you very much for your time.